Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Talking Freight, the weekly freight series brought to you by Saracis, a North American third-party logistics company with a focus on transportation management solutions through technology and services. Now, if you're a weekly viewer of Talking Freight, you know that we love to give you great tips to help you improve your practices when it comes to transportation, especially any tips that allow you to become more efficient, allow you to make your freight more attractive to carriers, and of course, at the end of the day, to help you reduce your overall transportation expenses, as they can make up a huge part of any of your supply chain budget. So we've been recently speaking a lot about the capacity crunch. And if you're paying attention or if you ship freight day to day, you're already starting to see a large increase in truckload rates. Now, this hasn't really impacted LTL too severely yet, but this could in the future. But for right now, let's talk about the money that you're spending on truckload shipping. You may be having trouble actually finding trucks right now. So we're gonna go into talking about switching from truckload to using a little bit of a known secret, but not by many, going the LTL volume freight route. So who doesn't like saving money on freight? And we're not talking about saving to prosperity or beating up carriers or 3PLs until you find the lowest quote of the day. In today's marketplace, no matter where, what, or how you do your shipping, logistics professionals are under pressure to reduce transportation costs. With rising fuel costs due to disruptions from the hurricanes in the supply chain, and currently, as we said, major full truckload reduced capacity, so how does a shipper find savings? Your less than truckload rates are generally fixed contract rates, whether you have a direct relationship with the carrier or a third party logistics provider. If you're shipping full truckload, the price is always going to be volatile depending on how close you are to the end of the month, seasonal capacity, the given lane, and the current fuel rate. If you have a solid shopping list with a few brokers in place for your truckload needs, you will usually find a decent rate. But how do you manage those in between shipments over LTL and under full truckload that we call volume freight? Well, we're gonna give you five tips on how to shop so you can impress your boss and improve the bottom line. So let's get into it. The first one is something we talk a lot about here at Saracis. It's a very fundamental, but very important practice. That's knowing your dimensions. Volume freight quotes are considered anything greater than five pallets and or over 5,000 pounds of freight, but usually no greater at the top end of 24 pallets or 40 linear feet. Volume freight quotes are determined by how much linear space your freight takes up in the trailer. So it's imperative that you or your customer know if the freight is standard pallets or what the true size is so you can get a quick and accurate quote from the carrier. This is one time that freight class is not as important as the actual real space you are using on the trailer. Number two, shop consolidators or 3PLs that work with consolidators. Consolidators are non-traditional LTL carriers. Consolidators charge by pallet space and or linear feet. The pros of a consolidator is that they are a low cost, long haul carrier and with minimal handling of freight because it all stays on the same trailer from dock to dock. The downside is that they only typically service long haul lanes, have no access to lift gates, and can be a little slower because they won't ship out until the trailer is full. So if transit time is not a major concern, consolidators are a great option. Number three, know your lanes. Consolidators typically only operate out of major cities that are important logistics hubs. You can find niche carriers in smaller markets, but they are usually lane specific. The best cities to find value options for consolidators are out of Los Angeles, Dallas, Chicago, Atlanta, and New York. Number four, think vertically about your volume freight. You are paying for the space on the floor, not the ceiling. So don't be afraid to stack those pallets high. As long as there is no issue with stacking your product, Try to get your pallets all the way up to eight feet high. Over the course of the months and year, you will save a lot of money and not waste space when arranging your freight in these volume freight moves. 
And the final tip, number five, don't be a chronic quoter. Lastly, don't be that person that puts out an email with 25 people on your shopping list. There is real value in having a good relationship with your carrier or 3PL. We've talked about that quite a bit on Talking Freight. In fact, collaboration is very important. We've even talked about radical collaboration and I'll make sure that I put a link to that blog post about radical co collaboration in the description below. So shippers who quote all the time but never reward the carriers with any freight can get blacklisted or develop a bad reputation among carriers. Eventually, they'll quote you very high until you go away or they won't work with you at all. The best practice is to develop a real business relationship with your carriers by knowing better how they handle your freight. Either develop an internal system to grade carriers, make sure you check out by clicking up top here our link to that Talking Freight episode where we give you tips on how to create a carrier scorecard. And each quarter, talk about the results internally and with your carrier partners. Or hire a 3PL who can offer you a transportation management system which offers you the ability to easily run reports based on the carriers you've chosen. So we hope you've enjoyed these valuable tips on shopping and shipping for volume freight. If you choose the right carriers or logistics service providers, they will find creative new ways to not only save you money as you ship, but truly give you a total savings over the long term by bringing true value to your organization. We hope you enjoyed today's episode of Talking Freight. Next week, we're going to continue our focus on the capacity crunch because it just keeps getting worse. The economy is improving, fuel rates might increase, there's a driver shortage, and more. So stay focused out there, make sure you're hitting best practices. If you want to get any information on or content around logistics and the supply chain, make sure you follow us here on social media. We post a lot of great content. Hope you have a great weekend. Hit that subscribe button if you're watching and haven't subscribed yet. Make sure you hit the bell so you get an email every time we publish an episode each Friday. Thanks a lot.